This video is about fitting models to data using GNU plot. It corresponds to section 8.5 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. Now the data I'm going to be using is very similar to the data that uh, you collect in lab 2, the thermistor lab. It's a little bit different in that uh, I did it a long time ago and did not have a Celsius thermometer in the house at the time and so I did all my measurements in Fahrenheit which is not something I recommend. The uh, data will all be done, the data fitting will all be done using this Fahrenheit data, uh, but you're going to want to do similar but not identical work to get your calibrations in Celsius. Let's take a look at the data that I've got. This is a file that I typed by hand as I collected the data, and notice that I started with information about the data collection, the metadata for this experiment. Every uh, set of measurements you do should always have metadata associated with it that includes information like time, who did it, what it is you're measuring, um, what instruments you used, all that sort of information because eight years later when you go to use the data you won't remember any of that. Okay, um, what I have here, it was eight years ago, um, I have the particular thermistor that I was uh, calibrating. Uh, I was using a fluke multimeter. Can't do that anymore because that multimeter broke. Um, it was a nice one too. Uh, I record two columns of information. The first one is degrees in Fahrenheit and the second one is resistance in kilo ohms. So I've got things from temperature of 192 degrees Fahrenheit down to about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see I have a fair number of measurements here. If uh, you collect data like this, one of the first things you want to do is just plot the data and take a look to make sure that uh, it's consistent with each other. You don't have any obvious typos that uh, you know, make one of the data points stick way out from the rest. Um, but I won't go through those steps for you. Those are pretty easy. Just single plot command in, in GNU plot. Instead what I'm going to do is walk you through a script that is much more formal in that it uh, it has comments in it to explain what's going on and it uh, goes through all the steps of fitting the different models to the data. And you can get this script incidentally. It's uh, available to you on the web so is this data. Uh, so you can duplicate this work and try playing with it. Um, the links for it are in the book. Okay, so again, I start with some commentary about what the script is about. Again, that's so that when I come back to it eight years later, I don't have to try and guess from sort of randomly named things what's going on. All right, so... I'm saying that the B equation is used, that's the one that we give in the book. We also have the Steinhardt St Hart equation, which is a little bit more um, sophisticated in its fitting, uh, and this script will be able to handle either one. And I gave two different formulas for the B equation. One of them uses the R infinity and B parameterization, which uh, I explained in the book. The other one uses the T0 and R0 instead of R infinity. Um, and that's the more commonly used one for data sheet specifications. They usually give what the resistance is at some particular temperature, often uh, 25 degrees C, and um, then a B value. Incidentally, both the temperature and the B value are in Kelvin. So since we're working in Fahrenheit here, whenever we use these things, we're going to have to adjust to change from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Um, so this is the one sort of that you use for spec sheets where they give you R0, T, a T0, and they give a B value. Then this is the R infinity and B version. And each of these is defined as a function. I have a, the name of the function. Then I have the resistance. So this is giving temperature as a function of resistance. And then I have some parameters for this particular function that need to be set in order to model a particular resistor. Or particular thermistor. So that the the goal of any model fitting here is to pick what are the values for these parameters. 
in the spec sheet, T0R01B, zero zero the manufacturer's done the fitting or whatever for you and is telling you these are what I expect it to be. Um, for your data, you'll have to fit your own uh, values for these two parameters. Then the Steinhardt Hart model, um, I've here used three parameters, A, B, and C, um, and it's just one over, and then the A plus B times log of, log of the resistance plus C times the log of the resistance cubed. So um, that's the standard Steinhardt Hart model. And it generalizes the other two so that I can define this function in terms of the Steinhardt Hart function either of these two earlier ones. So what I'm going to do for all the model fitting is just use the Steinhardt Hart formulation throughout. Okay, now I got some specifications from the data sheet at that time. Temperature 25 degrees C, well that's 273.15 plus 25. Uh, R25 is nominally 10,000 ohms. So notice that this was resistance in ohms, not kilo ohms. And then we had the the B2585 parameter, which they got not by doing a careful fitting to the entire curve, but, but just by measuring the resistance at two points, 25 degrees, where they got the 10,000, and 85 degrees, uh, where they got some other value. And from that, they determined the V value was 3435. Now, if you're using the thermistor in the range from 25 degrees to 85 degrees C, this, this fits pretty good. But if you're using it at higher temperatures or lower temperatures, the B value is actually not such a great fit because they didn't try to match over the entire range, but just at those two points. Okay, so if I want to convert the specifications to the uh, Steinhardt Hart equation, well, the specification for C, they weren't using that in their model. It was just the B equation. And so it's equivalent to setting the C parameter to zero and then I have the B and the A from the specifications by using the conversions that I put in the comments up here. So these three values are coming directly from the data sheet, or these values up here came from the data sheet, and these are converting them into the format needed for the Steinhardt Hart equation. Um, and then I did some conversions between Fahrenheit and Kelvin, and Kelvin and Fahrenheit, because I can never remember the exact formulas, and I just wrote the function to get uh, from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. I subtract off 32 so that I get the zeros in the same place. Then it's the size of the units is 5 ninths, and then I have to add the 273.15 because the absolute zeros way down there. It's not at the zero for Celsius. And then same thing for converting backwards. Okay, um, so all the things so far, I've just been defining functions. I've not provided any data. I've not done anything except for provide functions. Uh, one minor thing, I did define some constants, the constants that came from the data sheet. Okay, here I set up the title that goes at the top of the plot. I set up the X label and I set up the Y label. Here I've said in kilo ohms and in degrees Fahrenheit. It's also fairly common to put square brackets around the units rather than to say in. Um, I don't really care what you do, but always do tell me what it is you have on your axis and what units they're in, because it isn't obvious. If you just said, this is resistance, I have no idea whether it's in ohms or kilo ohms or mega ohms, and I need to know. For this plot, I chose kilo ohms. And for my y-axis, since I did my original measurements in Fahrenheit, I decided to plot this thing in Fahrenheit. Don't do that. I want to see your plots in Celsius. So you cannot use this script directly. It will not work for you. You will have to modify the script so that it handles Celsius. Okay, um, I did an unset label here, and that was just to get rid of any set label commands, uh, which I have down a little bit further in the plot, so that if I run the script repeatedly, I don't keep building up more and more labels. I get rid of all the old ones. Uh, before putting in new ones. And for the new ones, I do set label. And what this is going to do is it's going to put some text on the plot. And I have sprintf here. Sprintf is a kind of awkward function that was borrowed from the C programming language. Um, and what it does is it provides a way to put 
both text and fill in the blank sorts of things, numbers. So what I'm saying is I'm gonna print out that T equals one K divided by, and then there's this in parentheses, percent point three G. Percent point three G says, give me a number that's got three places after the decimal point in a good format. And I've got another one number here that'll do that, and that's times the natural log of r over one ohm. And that's the a spec and b spec values. So what I'm printing out on here is the specification values um, for the temperature as a function of resistance. And I'm saying where on the plot to put it. Now, I did not know in advance where on the plot to put things. These label commands were actually added later after I looked at the plot and said, oh, I'd like to put a label here. So I didn't start out by saying, I want the label right here. I added that after I knew where on the plot I wanted to put things. I also turned this thing around to give the resistance as a function of temperature. And again, the percent point zero F says, give me something in floating point format, but don't put anything after the decimal point. All right. I set the X range and the Y range. Now remember that X was going to be the resistance and Y was going to be the temperature. So I'm saying pick the entire range from star to star means from the very beginning to the very end. I'm not removing any of the data. Sometimes uh, when we've got complicated models, we may want to say, well, this part, these parameters, we only fit, want to fit in this range of values because they're not, they're not relevant elsewhere. Um, and you can get better fitting sometimes by not trying to fit all your data at once. For this uh, particular fitting, it's pretty straightforward. And so we'll just fit over the entire range of data for resistance and the entire range of data for temperature. Now we want to fit a two parameter model. That's the B equation model. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out A0 and B0 are going to be the results of the fit. Now we had an A spec and a B spec that came from the specification sheet and we expect those values to be decent. So we will start as an initial guess Let's set A0 and B0 to the, what the spec sheet says they ought to be. Um, and then, this is the magic line, fit. And I give a function here, which is F of T Stein. Notice that F up here was the convert to Fahrenheit. So we're taking whatever came out of the T Stein equation here, I notice that's the x here is what is going to be on the x-axis, and that was supposed to be the resistance. Um, so fit the steinhardt hart equation, but convert it to Fahrenheit. So the y-axis is going to be Fahrenheit, and the a0 and b0 are the parameters that are needed for the steinhardt hart model. We're not having a C model. This is just the two-parameter version, so C is 0. Then I have the data therm data 2txt using and now I've got some saying what are the columns well I want the resistance on the x-axis but if we go back and look at the data the resistance is in the second column and it's in kilo ohms but my function t stein was expecting resistance in ohms so I'm gonna say 1000 times the dollar sign 2 here says the second column by putting that whole thing in parentheses, GNU plot knows that this is a, a, an expression that it needs to evaluate, and the dollar sign indicates column numbers, and then I can just have any sort of algebraic expression here. So by taking the second column and multiplying by 1,000, that converts the data that in the file, which was in kilo-ohms, into ohms, which is what I needed to stick into the function here. And then the colon says what the y-axis is, and the y-axis is just column one. I could also have done parenthesis dollar sign one close parenthesis. Um, that's equivalent. The one is just done as a shorthand here because quite frequently people just want a particular column without doing any manipulation to it. 
then I need to say, what am I changing here? I'm fitting this model to this data, and this is how to interpret the file as data, but what are the parameters I'm adjusting? And the via here says A0 and B0 are the things you're allowed to adjust. So that tells the program, okay, you've got initial values for A0 and B0, try adjusting them to get a better fit for this data. And then I've got another pair of labels being printed here. Notice that they're at a different location than I did before. But it's essentially looking like the same thing, except for instead of the specified A and B values, I'm now printing A0 and B0. OK, and then finally, we can try fitting the entire three parameter model. And what I do is I start A0 and B0, A and B now, at A0 and B0, so that's good initial values. I don't start C at 0, though, because um, 0 is kind of a special value, and uh, quite often when it's doing the fitting, it tries to multiply or divide things. And so being right at 0 is kind of not a good idea. But I know that to get a, this A0 and Z, B0 to have a good value, I need to have a very small value of C. So I just picked 1 1 millionth. And that was kind of an arbitrary choice. If I had trouble with it converging, I might have adjusted this value and tried something different. Um, and again, I'm fitting the whole thing, but now I have A, B, and C, all three parameters being used. And I'm fitting the same data. So that looks exactly the same. But now I'm fitting it via A, B, and C. And notice that the T Stein equation gets used, that function gets used over and over again, but with different parameter values. Okay, and then I can print out the three parameter value model. And here I've only got a single label for this because it's kind of hard to turn this model around to print resistance as a function of temperature um, because it's, it's a cubic model. It's things that are a little bit messier. And so I didn't, didn't even attempt it. Okay, um, now what I'm, do, what I'm saying here is to plot the data as points. My data was quite far apart if you take a look the numbers here, I mean, I've got gaps of four and uh, possibly six, some pretty large gaps between the numbers. Um, so I don't want this to be drawn as a continuous curve. That would be misleading because I don't have data at a lot of the intermediate point, points. So I'm just going to plot the individual data points as points. And that's what the set style data points does. It says plot your points as your data points as points. Um, and then I can plot this thing with a log scale, or I could do unset log scale. Um, I could set log scale y, unset log scale y. Here I've done log on x, not log on y. Play around with that. Try different settings. See which ones gives you the most informative plots. Um, and then I want to place the legend somewhere where it won't interfere with all the plots and labels. Here I said, set the key at the bottom left. And again, I didn't start out with that. I just let it fall where it may. And then I looked to say, well, where's there a good place for this now that I've seen the curves and the data? And then I've got a plot command. And here I'm going to plot first the data. And again, it looks a lot like what we did with the fitting up here, except for I'm not rescaling this because I'm plotting this thing with kilo ohms on the x-axis. And so I'm just set, say using column 2, colon, column 1. And then I give it a title. I say that this is the data. Um, and the PS is point size. It's just an abbreviation for that. Um, and I'm saying make it 1.5 times the normal size. So I'm making the points kind of big to make them very obvious. And then I'm going to do in Fahrenheit what the model says. And here I have to multiply x by 1,000 because my x-axis is in kilo ohms now. But I need for this function to have the resistance in ohms. And I do it with the specify specified A and B, the ones from the spec sheet. I do it with the A0 and B0 from the two parameter fit, and I do it with A, B, and C from the three parameter fit. And I give each one a title. The LW2, that's line width, and it's just to make the lines a bit fatter. Depending what you're doing, for what purpose you're doing it, um, you may or may not want to change the point size and the line width. I did, these did it here mainly, so it comes out a little clearer on the screen, and also um, so that you would have an example of changing those things. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do now is uh, bring up GNU plot, and all I'm going to do is I'm in the same directory where I have both the data and this Steinhardt GNU plot file, and so I'll run GNU plot and then type load steinhardhart.gnu plot in quotes. And that'll load the entire um, script file. So this is just running the commands from that file. And then let's uh, see if I can bring up the GNU plot window. Okay, let's make that a little wider. Okay, so let's look at the, the different parts of this. We've got the title at the top. We've got the X label on the bottom, the Y label on the side here. I'd specified logarithmic scale for the X axis, but linear scale for the Y axis. And that makes things almost a straight line. Straight lines are the only thing people really understand in plots. So this looks to me like a decent way to do this plotting. You could try looking at it without the log scales or with the log scale and temperature. And you can get decent plots with any of those. But general rule of thumb, pick, this, pick the scales for your axes that either make sense in terms of the model or that uh, give you straight lines if there isn't anything from the model that says, makes it obvious. I have the labels that I plotted there, which give me, here's the three parameter model with those three parameters given here. Here's uh, the two parameter model that was fitted. I believe that's this one. And I believe this one was the two parameter model that came directly from the uh, data sheet. Yeah, the 35, 435 was what I put in from the data sheet. So this one's the specification, this one's the fit, and this one's the three parameter model. And you can also see that uh, which one's which with the colored lines here. And you can see this data was not very clean. I've got some points here that look a little bit off the curve, some points down here that look a little messy. Um, I've seen student data that's a little better than this. Um, I've also seen student data that's worse. Uh, if you've got time when you're collecting your data, it's a good thing to plot up those data points even without having done any of the fitting and just to take a look to see if things are falling along a nice smooth curve or if you have anomalies. Because when you've got anomalous data, you can go back and collect more data in that region and say, well, maybe I mistyped it or you know, maybe it was touching the side of the cup or something because that looks wrong. Um, and by recollecting the data, you can get more confidence that you've made good measurements, um, particularly if it's your first time dealing with an ohmmeter and trying to juggle the ohmmeter and the thermometer at the same time. It's, it's easy to make mistakes. Um, and so check your data. Uh, look for anomalies, look for gaps. Here I've got a pretty big gap in temperature right here in this region. Um, pretty good spacing over here. A few gaps up here at the high temperatures. The high temperatures are a little hard to get close spacing on because the water cools down so quickly. Um, but this is clearly enough data to fit a two parameter model to. And which of these mo models works best? Well. The yellow one clearly fits quite nicely down here, and it seems to fit pretty well throughout. And that's the three-parameter one. If you've got more parameters, you can fit, them, fit the data better. Um, if you look at the blue one, that fits not too badly down here. A little bit off at this end. So if you're trying to make cold measurements, the blue curve looks decent. If you're trying to make hot measurements, well, maybe it's a little bit off. If we look at the spec, that's the one that uh, the ones that came from the spec sheet. It looks pretty bad down at the cold temperatures. Remember, I said that they did it at uh, 25 degrees C. Well, that's about 70 Fahrenheit, or 72 Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. So that's about here, and all my models look about the same in that region. And the other temperature was about 85 degrees C, which is somewhere up here somewhere, and it's doing a better job fitting up there than the uh, fitted two-parameter one. But actually, not a whole bunch better. The three-parameter one and the two-parameter one are in better agreement than the spec. So the spec 
looks a little bit off. Their, their B values is a little bit off and by measuring it yourself you can actually get a better fit to the data. So that's really all I need to cover at this point uh, in model fitting. We'll be doing much more complicated models later on and ones where the data is not so smooth and where you possibly may have more data from more automated, more automated data collection. Um, for your own work, the main things that you're going to have to do differently is you're going to be having your resistance possibly in ohms, possibly in kilo ohms, depending on how you collect the data and what you put in your file. And you're going to have temperature in degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And so you have to modify the script to handle that correctly.